thank you for being here. This is Majesty Sussex Report. I'm Antonio. Then today's topic is Mean Girls. What does the movie have to do with Meghan Markle and Prince Harry and the British royal family? I'm presently in transit at um, the Connecton Airport in Houston. And do forgive me as I put this together in transit and uh, there will not be a lot of fancy graphics or anything like that, but just sort of straightforward information. I hope you are okay with that and um, forgive me for not um, bringing in a certain graphic and image standard that um, I try my best to do, but I wanted to get this out to you today. So with that said, Mean Girls, here we go. The Mean Girl Archetype is a prevalent figure in media and popular culture, often represented as a character who is manipulative, popular, and as the name suggests, mean to others, especially towards those outside their social circle. This archetype can be found in movies, TV series, and literature. And while it might be amplified for entertainment purposes, Elements of it can sometimes be observed in real-world social dynamics. Let's delve into the various aspects of the mean girl archetype. The mean girl is typically depicted as highly confident and socially dominant within her peer group. She often holds a high status in social settings, like schools or clubs or communities, and uses her position to exert power and control over others. This character, this character is usually very conscious of her image and reputation, which she maintains through combination of attractiveness, charisma, fashion sense, and often wealth or perceived superiority. So what's the prequel of becoming a mean girl? The transformation into or the emergence of the mean girl can stem from various factors, both personal and environmental. One of them is insecurity. Underneath this surface, the mean girl may harbor deep insecurities and fears about her worth, appearance, and social standing. Being mean or controlling can be a defense mechanism to mask their vulnerabilities. Next is social conditioning. So growing up in environments that prioritize material success, appearance, and social status over empathy and kindness can condition individuals to adapt a mean girl behavior to fit in or excel. Family dynamics. Family issues such as uh, lack of attention, too much pressure, or modeling after a similar behaving family member can contribute to developing such traits. Past traumas. So past traumas or, or, or bullying, um, ex experiences of being bullied or other uh, tra traumatic e events can lead to adapting mean behaviors as a form of retaliation or protection. So what might be possible psychological traits that a mean girl may possess? The, the mean girl archetype often displays a um, or displays several key psychological traits. Number one, um, narcissism, a strong focus on oneself with little regard for the feelings or needs of others. Manipulation, skilled in influencing or controlling others for personal gain. Aggression, engaging in direct or direct forms of aggression, like spreading rumors, social exclusion, or verbal abuse. Social intelligence. 
Despite their negative traits, they are often very socially savvy, understanding how to navigate social hierarchies effectively. Now, the mean girl must have some kind of redeeming qualities. So let's, let's, let's check them out. While the archetype is predominantly negative, mean girls can have redeeming qualities or potential for growth. For example, in leadership, their ability to influence and lead can be redirected towards positive and constructive ends. Resilience. Their outward confidence and ability to navigate social landscapes can demonstrate a form of resilience. Capacity for change. Many stories involving mean girls culminate in a moment of realization or redemption where the character learns uh, the value of kindness, empathy, and true friendship. The mean girl archetype while often exaggerated in fiction, speaks to real social dynamics and the complex interplay of factors that can lead individuals to adapt certain behaviors. Understanding this archetype involves looking beyond the surface level to the psychological and environmental factors at play, as well as considering the potential for personal growth and redemption. In the grand gilded halls of Buckingham Palace, a modern tale unfolds, echoing the dynamics of a high school drama we're all too familiar with. This isn't just a story, it's a reflection, a mirrored reality of mean girls. That narrative that played out within the British royal family through a blend of real events and archetypical analysis, we dive into this saga of inclusion, exclusion, and the quest for acceptance in the most scrutinized family in the world. Act One, The Newcomer. Once upon a time, Meghan Markle, much like Katie Heron, stepped into a world vastly different from her own. Bright-eyed and hopeful, Meghan entered the royal family with dreams of making a positive impact. However, akin to Katie's initial foray into the plastics, Meghan soon encountered the complex dynamics of royal life. For Meghan and Harry's wedding, Kate also wore white. A seemingly benign choice, yet loaded with unspoken hierarchies and challenges to Meghan's place within the family. Act 2. The Glare and the Tears As Meghan tried to navigate her new reality, instances piled up each a thread in the tapestry of court life. Kate's hateful glare at Meghan's and Harry's walk in alone at the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. A look can convey a thousand words, and in that moment, a narrative was reinforced. 
the story of Kate making Megan cry over wedding details, only for it to be twisted in the public eye, serves as a painful reminder of the power of perception over truth. Act 3. The Easter Snob and Baby Bray. The saga continued with William Cade's rebuke over a forgotten Easter tradition. Tradition? Harry claimed was fabricated. Then there was the offensive or offense taken by Kate over Megan's comment about baby brain during pregnancy. These instances weren't just about misunderstandings. They were emblematic of the deeper issues within the family, a constant battle for respect and understanding. <laughs> Act 4, The Walkabout and the Child's Question. Even public appearances became battlegrounds. Kate claimed that the hardest thing she had to do was a walkabout with Megan and Harry. Hmm, the hardest thing she had to do? It was a de declaration of the emotional toll these dynamics was taking on her. The visible annoyance when a child inquire, inquired about Megan wasn't just about the question. It was about the constant spotlight, the unending comparison, and the struggle to maintain her facade. <laughs> Act 5. The Court and the Coats. The legal battle Megan faced, the solitary fight against a tabloid for the invasion of her privacy, underscored the isolation within her own family. Jason K, you know who I'm talking about, offered to testify against Megan. The coordinated wearing of similar coats by Kate, Zara, Sophie, and they pulled in also the child. All were not just actions, but messages, each a demonstration of the internal alignment and <laughs> Allegations within the royal household. We gotta show her who rules. Mean, mean girls. Harry and Meghan's departure was not a mere relocation. It was an act of self-preservation. A necessary step towards mental health and autonomy. In his memoir, Spare, Prince Harry unveils the depth of his feelings and experiences, offering a glimpse into the pain, the pressure, and the profound need to protect his family from the very institution he was born into. Just as Katie Heron in Mean Girls enters a new school environment, Meghan Markle entered the British royal family both outsiders stepping into well-established systems with their own rules and hierarchies. For Katie, it was the social labyrinth of high school. For Megan, the centuries-old traditions of the British monarchy. In Mean Girls, the plastics represent the pinnacle of social hierarchy, dictated trends, behaviors, and who gets to be in the inner circle. In the narrative around Megan's experience, certain members of the royal family and the institution itself are portrayed as setting the standards for acceptance and behavior within the palace walls. With public expectations and royal protocols acting as unwritten rules of conformity and performance. The movie shows how rumors and a manipulated image can impact a person's reputation and relationships, paralleling Mark Megan's experiences where media narratives and alleged palace leaks painted her in a controversial light. The dynamics of You Can't Sit With Us transforms into headlines Father where Megan's actions and character were constantly scrutinized and often criticized 
reflecting a struggle for acceptance and understanding within a framework that seemed resistant to change. Katie's journey is one of losing and then rediscovering her identity amidst the pressures of, of wanting to conform. Megan's narrative, particularly after stepping back from royal duties, is similarly about reclaiming her narrative and identity. Her and Prince Harry's decision to forge a new path can be seen as a quest to define their lives on their own terms, away from the, di away from the dictates of an environment where um, they were that they found oppressive. Mean Girls tackles bullying and the isolation it can cause. Themes that resonate with Megan's candid discussions about her mental health struggles and feelings of isolation within the royal family. These themes highlight the emotional toll of trying to belong to a group that does not fully accept you. Just as Mean Girls concludes with characters finding common ground and rejecting the toxic dynamics of the past, Megan's story has sparked conversations about the need for empathy, support, and reform in how we discuss and treat public figures. Her openness about her struggles has encouraged a broader dialogue about mental health, media responsibility, and the importance of supporting those who feel marginalized. In drawing these parallels, it's crucial to remember that while Mean Girls is a work of fiction designed for entertainment, experiences of real people involve complex emotions and consequences. Both stories, however, underline the importance of kindness, understanding, and the strength found in authenticity and speaking one's truth.